Almost everyone has H&M brand clothes in their wardrobe, from stray musicians to celebrities. For several decades, this Swedish brand charmed the whole world and became something like IKEA in the fashion world, where you can find stylish and high-quality things for any taste at affordable prices. How did a small factory become an empire and conquered the world of fashion? Who stood at the origins of the brand and came up with the idea of cheap and beautiful? How did the label manage to wash off the stigma of racism, unethical production and the imposition of beauty standards? The H&M clothing brand appeared in 1947 in Sweden. More precisely, it was then called simply Hens, which, translated from Swedish, means for her and corresponded to reality as best as possible. The company began exclusively with women's clothing. The founder of the brand, Erling Persson, had nothing to do with the fashion world. He delivered cheese to Stockholm restaurants, but was passionately obsessed with the idea of opening his own business. Such an idea came to him during a trip to the United States. Walking around New York, Person drew attention to a large number of small street clothing stores that sold cheap but stylish and beautiful things. Things were different in Sweden. Although the country did not suffer from post-war devastation, there was practically no mass production of affordable and stylish clothes. What was sold in stores was either expensive, or ugly, or both at the same time. Women were trying to get around it as best they could. Erling realized that while this niche is free, it was urgently necessary to occupy it, and start the business. Starting a business in the capital was expensive. Therefore, he opened a small factory in the city of Westeros and began selling clothes at very democratic prices right after it was produced. The products person produced were of high quality and much more stylish than the boring clothes that could be found in stores. He also hired great designers. There was immediately a demand for hence products, it became inconvenient to sell things in the factory, and in the same year Erling Persson opened the first store in Sweden. By 1964, the Hens boutique chain had already spread throughout the country. A few years later, the businessman thought about expanding the business. The brand covered a huge ladies' audience, but still did not offer anything for men and children. There were huge opportunities for development. In 1968, Person bought Moritz Whitfer's hunting and fishing clothing store, changed the brand name to Hens and Moritz and began to produce men's and children's clothing, making the brand a completely family brand. A year later, H&M had 42 stores in Sweden, it was time to enter the world arena. Erling entrusted this responsible direction to his son Stefan, who thoroughly began to embody the strategy of entering the international market. Under him, in 1976, the first H&M store opened outside Sweden, on London's Oxford Circus. Entrepreneurial Person Jr. came up with a successful advertising move, all customers were handed out ABBA albums. As a result, queues lined up at the entrance to the store, because the team was then super popular. By the way, the soloist of the group Annie Friedlingst had a few years earlier starred in an advertisement for brand cosmetics. By 1980, H&M stores were already in Norway, Denmark, Germany, and Switzerland. In 1982, brand founder Erling Persson retired and handed over the full management of the company to his son Stefan, who continued the course of expanding the presence of H&M in the global fashion industry. Around the same time, the company was almost the first among world retailers to organize the delivery of goods to the house, in the era of lack of e-commerce, this seemed something truly unreal. However, the key reason for the success of the brand was, of course, not the service, but the amazing mass quality of clothing and the speed of its production with decent quality. Fashion is perishable goods, Stefan Person liked to repeat, emphasizing that the launch of a new line of clothes in H&M, from sketch to sale, takes only three weeks. Only Zara works faster, where it takes two weeks for the whole process. For comparison, the famous American Gap takes six months for these stages. Thanks to these speeds, H&M products are always relevant in terms of fashion trends, and warehouses are not littered with old collections, which urgently need to be sold at high prices. Of course, this requires gigantic capacities and, as a result, production costs. And here Stefan Person was helped by the cotter he inherited from his father, if not to say stinginess. All H&M production is in countries with cheap labor, in Cambodia, Myanmar, Bangladesh and others. 
The company does not buy premises for stores, but only rents them, and the famous Swedish lag is laid in the brand culture itself, a cult of economy and moderation. It is not customary to fly business class for business negotiations and take taxis at the expense of the company, and only top managers have corporate cellular communications. Stefan Persson himself is no exception. As a billionaire, he wears modest clothes, avoids luxurious lifestyle, and even acquired a villa on the Côte d'Azur of France, a mandatory attribute of all the rich of the world, only in the late 2000s. He tried to raise the same principles in his son Carl Johan Persson, to whom he transferred the management in 2009. Despite the mass nature of H&M, the brand managed to achieve recognition of both ordinary people and aspiring fashionistas. The brand often attracts celebrities and supermodels to participate in advertising campaigns, and designers from the world of high fashion, to develop clothes. The practice of collaborations with eminent couturiers opened the way for H&M to the luxury segment of the market. Therefore, in 2004, a collection of clothes for H&M was created by designer Karl Lagerfeld. In stores in large cities, it was completely sold out an hour after it went on sale. After that, Kylie Minogue, Madonna, David Beckham, Donatella Versace, Stella McCartney, Roberto Cavalli and many others did things for the Swedish brand. Almost all these collections were wildly successful, queues were long, and buyers literally pulled their clothes out of each other's hands. Often the collections were advertised by the designers themselves or famous models. In the 1990s, supermodels Cindy Crawford and Anna Nicole Smith could be seen on H&M billboards. This experience, contrary to expectations, was not very successful, billboards with beauties and underwear eventually had to be removed due to a threat to traffic safety. In 1999, the brand made another attempt by inviting Claudia Schiffer to participate in advertising. However, this idea also failed, billboards were broken for the sake of posters, and only the promise to distribute them for free to everyone after the end of the campaign helped to reach the end of the campaign. Since then, H&M has radically changed its advertising strategy. Famous and spectacular models are still invited to advertise brand clothes, but the promotion strategy has changed. Rejection of hypertrophied sexuality, free poses, a classic white background, a signature with the price of a specific thing. This strategy was welcomed with open arms especially in the context of the trend towards naturalness, democracy and the fight against stereotypes in the beauty industry. Even at the dawn of a new ethic, when the fashion world was just starting to be fiercely criticized for promoting unrealistic beauty standards and racial monotony, H&M was one of the first to respond to these calls. Stefan Persson, who was at the helm of the company, made a penitent speech that H&M chose unnaturally thin girls for its campaigns, which could form inadequate attitudes about female beauty in society. The businessman promised that in the future the brand will be more responsible, it will begin to attract models with different figures and ethnic roots. In addition, a strategic decision was made to reduce the number of retouches in the pictures. Sometimes this happened at the initiative of the model itself. For example, in 2013, singer Beyoncé participated in the H&M advertising campaign, and she categorically refused to retouch her photos in favor of natural beauty. Now, shows, billboards and websites of H&M online stores on a mandatory basis feature plus-size models, different races and ethnic groups. In part, this is a natural reaction to changes in the mood of society, in part, these were forced measures after a series of public scandals involving the brand. H&M has been criticized many times by human rights activists and eco-activists for non-ecological production, exploitation of the child labor and generally unethical working conditions. In the media, information leaked that children harvest cotton for H&M somewhere in Uzbekistan for pennies, and in Myanmar workers work for half the minimum wage. In 2011, at a Cambodian factory, nearly 200 workers lost consciousness during the week due to chemical vapors, poor ventilation and inadequate nutrition. And in 2013, workers suffered when the building of a garment factory in Bangladesh collapsed. After that, H&M, along with other retailers, signed an agreement on the safety of construction and production in Bangladesh and took a steady course towards environmental friendliness. It became obvious to the company management that in the modern world, it is not enough to produce beautiful clothes and sell them cheaply, you still need to do this socially responsibly. 
Many collections began to be produced from processed raw materials, and part of the money from their sale was transferred to environmental funds. In particular, it is known of long-term cooperation of H&M with the International Fund of Purification of Water Aid Fresh Water. In 2013, the brand launched the Close to Loop Clothing Recycling Program, which became popular. A person can bring old things of any brands to H&M and get a discount coupon for them. They are sorted and, depending on the state, sent to second hands or processing. In 2018, H&M got into another scandal, now racially motivated. The stumbling block was a sweatshirt with the inscription coolest monkey in the jungle. This alone wouldn't be a problem, but a black boy was chosen as the model for this piece of clothing. Many models and designers then refused to cooperate with the brand, and the company's shares instantly fell by 30%. The company did not allow more such incidents and even more actively plunged into the topic of racial tolerance, natural beauty, social responsibility and feminism. The brand is actively advocating for women's rights. 74% of the company's management and 50% of the board of directors are women. Since 2020, for the first time in the history of the brand, a woman has been at the helm of H&M, Helena Helmerson, who has been working for the company since 1997, took the chair of executive director. The Swedish brand H&M is a vivid example that stylish does not mean expensive, and the right promotion can make the brand popular both in the mass market and among the demanding public. Today, H&M has almost 5,000 stores around the world, and new ones open each year. There is no doubt, there must be a lot of beautiful clothes.